Um, so, Lars, tell me what's going on here with this machine and these exciting looking databases. <laughs> yeah. now, what we do here is um, the, the raw material basic information for matching colors. So we have downstairs two ladies who mix all the day colors, all the kind of colors what was customer um, order. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you need a basic, a data basic. And this is what uh, Mr. Overdick do here. He creates the basic data that we can create with this on the computer, uh, a recipe. So this scanner scans mm -hmm. the color, get a recipe, and then they can mix a recipe. And how many have you got in there at the moment? Roughly. <laughs> <laughs> with different colors and, and, and themes you've got in, because you're building up that database the whole yeah, time. Yeah, we build it, but, but it's close to a million. Wow. Yeah, so we, we mix daily more than 100 mm -hmm. different kind of colors yeah, every 160 day. 160 between 160 two at the moment, yeah. So, and every recipe is um, saved on the computer yeah. and built up daily. Yeah. Well, this is the least exciting machine we've got in here, so I want to go and, and get, explain to all behind what we've got and go through each and every machine. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so Lars, the second machine we have here. Yeah. Um, tell me, this, these two boxes sort of work with each other, don't they? Yeah, so this is one, one machine including this um, notebook here or yeah. laptop, and um, this machine what we do here is, so we have uh, another business what we do is anti-friction coating. So mm -hmm. we um, supply or sell products to the car industry for every part inside of the car to reduce or to lim um, delay noises. Yeah, so, so you know when you're, yeah, when you're in the cars, and there's a really good uh, demonstration you've got out in the hallway that we're rolling some B-roll for you, um, but you know with particularly leather interiors, you get in and the seat rubs slightly against the center console, and this rubs against that. This is a, allows you to show that you have sufficiently reduced friction, yes. and it's essentially a very, very sensitive mic uh, microphone, isn't it? Yeah, it is, absolutely. So really, the, the microphone can hear noises what we can't hear. So, um, but to get an uh, idea how good the performance is, and the, the norms say also that when, you, when we apply a product, it has to stay five years, mm -hmm. and have to perform for five years, and it has to work in South Africa, yeah. and in Norway, also. You know, so we have this big in all conditions, different yeah. there, or Malaysia where it's very human, or in Thailand, it has to work everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. So that is also what we have to test here, that it has to stay five years. So this machine helps us to figure out how good is our anti friction coating. So this essentially just rubs two things together yes. over and over and yes. over again. Yes. Yeah. Um, are these like tubes? What do these all do? There's, there's a lot of tubage going on in there. This is just for the pressure, so there's air inside, how many pressure you have on this. Oh, okay. So we can simulate, for example, we have also a anti friction coating for the rubber on a glass roof. Mm -hmm. yeah? So when it goes up, uh, close and um, open and close, it's not always the same pressure between glass, uh, between the glass and, yeah. the, uh, and the rubber. Yeah. Yeah? So we can simulate the okay. pressure, I mean, yeah. more and less pressure what is on a rubber between rubber and glass. Because this anti friction coating is not just for leather, it's also for glass, rubber, plastics. vinyl, plastics, metal, a lot of different. So we have run about 30, 32 products. But this is really just for the car industry in the production. And um, it's obviously an accelerated tester. Yeah. So how, how long do you leave something testing here to simulate, say, a year in a car, if it's a, a seat or something like that? That's uh, also a bit independent, but um, but when we have to do this long-term test, before we do, after this we have to do the real long-term test mm -hmm. before we get a certified the products, yeah? So, um, but here it's between one week and two weeks, a bit independent in which area it is. Is it on a glass roof or is also outside uh, raining and sun mm -hmm. or is it a uh, part downstairs on the seat or behind some, some places? So it's a bit in, independent what kind of area it is, mm -hmm. a different kind of rules. Absolutely, and yeah. you're saying um, there are only two of these in the whole wide world. That is, yeah. This uh, a, it's a it's a machine what is just building to to do this test, and BMW has one, and we get the second one from BMW because they want that we can test their products. Yeah, too. can yeah. test their products. Too. That sounds really cool. Okay, okay. Well, let's without further ado go on to the next machines and yes. see what we can find. Yeah. Um, so this machine looks vaguely familiar. Yeah. Um, in a previous issue of the Pro Detail magazine, we did a leather test, which we had a special machine that Cunlock sent all the way from here uh, to uh, us and John Delu, and uh, it was essentially what I call a bum-on-seat machine. Technically, it's not called a bum-on-seat machine. What is it? The Martindale is the name. It's a, a Martindale machine because uh, 
I think it comes from the from the founder. His name was Martindale. I'm not sure yeah. about this 100%, but we call it Martindale uh, machine. And what it do, I, I can switch it on that you see. So we have four panels here, and your mm -hmm. testing machine was a smaller one. There's with two, two bumps and seats. This it simulates four buttons. Yeah, it, it simulates four buckets, but you can buy also one with six or with eight. You, have, you can buy bigger ones. For buses. Buses, yeah. And um, so then it moves over the leather. So we have here inside the leather. And on this one here we have a, a, a white mm -hmm. that has pressure on it. And then you see here. Um, I can stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's not yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then you can see here is the jeans. So that's uh, denim. So I just that's a diamond. Yeah. I'll show you to the camera there. This yeah. is um, simulating obviously pretty similar colours. I could taste from whoever this was. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is one. Um, this is a special one, which is just allowed from um, BMW. So BMW say this kind of textile you have to test it. Is that all? BMW drivers have to wear exactly the same jeans, don't they? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes it makes fact. sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. And obviously, we've got lots of different weights there, and you would leave this for going for hours and hours to simulate much, much butter catcher. Yeah. There's um. I think four, five thousand for gene style transfer mm -hmm. is the norm. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Four five thousand sure. rotations. Five thousand rotations is mm -hmm. for for gene style transfer, and we also have to test it. So when we have a repair product or a care product or leather shield or something like this, we have to pass the same test what original new leather have to pass. Yes. So and that is what we test here. So we use we, we take the product, we do a repair, and then we put it on the machine that we know okay we can pass the whole test. After this, we have to send it of of course to an official lab. Mm -hmm. What the, what, the, what the car industry want from us, and then they test it again. And that was a really interesting point, is that the repairs themselves have to prove to be strong, as strong as if the leather was virgin and brand new. Uh, and actually, you're saying Volkswagen require you to have it slightly better than... than, than the, mo no, the most OEMs want a bit better, mm -hmm. minimum bit better, because they say, okay, when it passed in the lab, the so real life is maybe a bit harder. Mm -hmm. So we want to be sure when we do a repair that it is minimum the same like brand new leather or possible to get a bit better. So this machine is all about testing the um, ability of leather not to be stained by a, a third party product, yes. whereas I believe the next machine we're going to be looking at is one that sees uh, whether it, it's kind of testing it the other way around to make sure a third party product isn't stained by the leather. Yeah, so absolutely. this is, if you have, for example, if you ever tried re dyeing your clothes and you're, you're a moron like me, uh, every time you then sit down on a sofa or something, then suddenly all the dye has transferred itself to that particular bit of furniture or car. So the idea here is to do with about the Kind of the protection of the or the sealing in of the colors that are in the, in, in the leather, yes. Yeah, yes. so let's go have a and look also it's the same if the color bounded very well. Mm -hmm. So, even when you do a repair, that you don't get the color on your clothes, yes. Yeah, so, so it's the other way around, yeah. yeah. It works for doctors also. <laughs> so, we're now at another machine, and trust yes. me, there are two more really cool ones. But this one, I think, is, is my second favorite, and you'll probably see which is my favorite. <laughs> um, we've talked about the machine where the denim you're making sure the leather doesn't get stained by yes. denim, yeah. And we mentioned how this is reverse of that, yes. Show us how this works, yeah. So, it works. I have to switch on here, so it moves forward and back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and here is a, a special norm material. Okay. Yeah, in German's fields. I don't know in English. Good so, to know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so it rubber f um, back and forth. Yeah, and it has to pass the test uh, 500 times when it's dry, mm -hmm. 250 when it's wet with water, and 80 with sweat. Yes, yes. And so sweat, that's we interesting. We've got sweat in a bottle here. Sweat in a bottle. Um, yeah. Well, Colourlock have, you, we, we aren't allowed to film it, but they have a farm with lots of large, you know, slightly overweight men doing exercise. And they, they go around with special straws and they just milk it off them. Yeah, um, so if you want a bottle now. Yeah, just exactly. Me. It, it, it smells absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> um, and I'm assured that, um, yeah, so it's pretty authentic. But in fact, it's actually just water pH 8 because that simulates human sweat. Yeah. And um, we don't actually have a milking powder, unfortunately. But it sounds always. More exciting. Yeah. I think that's more exciting. And so basically, once this has done its run of 500 dry, 250 wet, and 80 with yeah. sweaty things with sweaty. on, the idea is you pull that little pad out, and if that pad should have no discoloration, it should yeah. be just so it, it, It's independent what kind of color. So darker colors is a bit allowed to have a little bit on it. Okay. Even red is also that you have sometimes a little bit on it. But um, there's a norm how much it's allowed or not how much is allowed. So then it can pass. And also what we do on this machine is we test also the leather. So we, mm -hmm. we take a look on the leather. 
that we can't see any peeling or rub off or a glossy um, changing or something like that. a bit like of friction on there. That's, that's yeah. got a bit of, yes. a bit of rub to yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So if the leather comes too glossy or pills uh, start a pilling or something like this, that it pill off or something like this, it's also not okay, then it doesn't pass the test. So you look on both sides, mm -hmm. but the main thing idea from this machine is that you don't get a dye transfer from the leather Onto to, to this. Yeah. And um, you can get this material also in black okay. for bright colors. Yeah. Yes, so for sense. bright leather colors, no? It's quite mesmerizing. Isn't it? Yeah, just nice. Yeah, it's nice. Um, cool. Right then, we have got another machine over here. Um, now this machine is my favorite, um, and we're going to set up and have a little look at that. Yeah. Was it?